Hi, I'm Dave Moran. I'm the co-author of the Visual Histology DVD series. This film clip is to give you a brief introduction to what one of the individual DVDs is like. The image that you see here is a section through the eyeball of a horse. And we chose a large mammal because the eye is large and we can photograph this section directly with a video camera without having to resort to a microscope. And I think it's a good idea to have a look at the basic components of the eye as they are in their normal size and position first before going to the microscope because the microscopic anatomy is quite complex and it's easy to get lost. And if you know which part is where, it makes the whole thing make sense. At the front of the eyeball is the cornea here, which is transparent. And the cornea serves as part of the dioptric apparatus of the eye. It helps to focus rays of light on the retina, which is back here. We were just looking at part of the lateral wall of the eyeball, and now we're going to look at the posterior wall of the eyeball at higher magnification. So here, in the back of the eye, the arrow is sitting in the vitreous humor in the inside of the eyeball. The outside of the eyeball would be out here, and the arrow is now in some of the muscles that are responsible for moving the eye. The retina is right here, and the arrow is at the junction of the retina with the vitreous humor. And the retina consists of many layers of cells, and the thickness of the retina extends from here to here. The layer just outside the retina is called the choroid, which extends from here to here. The choroid, as you can see, is highly pigmented and also highly vascular, so most of these holes that you see here are venules and large capillaries associated with a very rich circulatory supply to the retina, which uses an awful lot of energy and nutrients. Posterior to the choroid is the sclera, which we've seen before, and the sclera is the dense connective tissue layer which gives the eyeball its shape. So once again from the top down, the vitreous humor is here, the retina extends from here to here, the choroid is here, and the sclera is here. And let's go on now to specifically look at the retina at higher magnification. This section shows the full thickness of the retina which extends from here to here, and part of the choroid which is here. The sclera, which stained green in the previous section and which corresponds to the white of your eye, is beneath the screen and consequently you can't see it here. Now it's important to be aware of the pathway of light. Light traveling through the eyeball comes through the middle of the eyeball, through the vitreous humor, and traverses the retina in this direction and the light rays are finally absorbed by the pigment cells um, and the connective tissues of the choroid right here. There's one very significant point to make, and that is that the photoreceptors of the retina, the photoreceptive elements, are right here. The rods and cones are the photoreceptors of the retina. They're right here, and they're all the way at the back of the retina. So the retina appears to be built upside down. That is, light has to travel through the entire thickness of the retina before reaching the photoreceptors. Now, just by inspection, you can see the retina has a number of layers here, and so I will name them for you going from the inside out. This is where the photoreceptors are, so this would be the so-called layer of rods and cones here. Now the rods and cones have inner segments, which are located here, outer segments, which are very filamentous structures located here, and these outer segments insert into a layer of pigment epithelium, which is here. The nuclei of the rods and cones are here, and this layer is called the outer nuclear layer because it's outermost in the retina, it's most posterior. There's a layer here, which is called the outer plexiform layer, where lots of nervous connections are made. There's another layer of nuclei here, which is called the inner nuclear layer. There's a sort of clear layer here, where lots of nervous connections are made. This is called an inner plexiform layer. And there's a layer of cells here, which are called ganglion cells. This would be the ganglion cell layer. And then there is a layer of nerve fibers, which are here, which is called the layer of nerve fibers. One important thing to remember is that these ganglion cells are large cells. Each ganglion cell gives rise to a single axon. These axons all go out and pass through the nerve fiber layer and aim towards the optic nerve. So the optic nerve is a collection of axons of ganglion cells whose cell bodies are all located in this layer here. Now this will become a bit more apparent when we look at the retina at higher magnification in the next image. In this image, it's a little easier to see the different components of the retina. The arrow is at the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and it's pointing to the pigment epithelium here, into which the outer segments of the rod and cone photoreceptors insert. 
Here you can see a cone photoreceptor fairly clearly. They are large and conical shaped. The rod photoreceptors are narrower and straighter. They're right here. And the inner segments are here. The outer segments are here. And the cell bodies of the rod and cone photoreceptors and their nuclei are in the outer nuclear layer here. <laughs>